So I'm sharing with you the book that I have read before and that I read and reread many times over and over again. It's a book called The Living Gita, um, a commentary for modern readers by Sri Swami Sachidananda. I'm gonna show you the book. You see, you're you're gonna be able to read it because you know it just it's it's um, you know okay. So we just had that conversation. All right. So um, I got this book when I was in my um, training as a teacher uh, a, a, about a decade ago, I guess. And um, Sri Swami Satchidananda is uh, uh, a student of Swami Shivananda and uh, the, the integral, not integral, integral institute is located in New York City <clears throat> and that's where I studied for my um, 200 hours training and this was one of the books that I received as required reading for my uh, certification. Um, so here's a little note from His Holiness Sri Swami Satchidananda. Scriptures ought to be read again and again. If any of the lines here catch your eye and your heart, read them often. Learn them by heart and apply them in your life. You don't even need a whole sentence, not even half a sentence. Just a quarter of one line is enough to lift you like a rocket, not just to the moon or Mars, but to the heavenly sun itself. Signed by him. All right. So, so Sri Swami Satchidananda, Swami Satchidananda, Swamiji, he's a teacher, he's a guru, he's from India, who came here and taught yoga. And this is a, a book, it's, um, Gita is not his book, but the commentary is his commentary, um, collected by students and, and published in, into this beautiful text. And um, he wrote an introduction, the introduction is this, um, let's see, introduction. I keep doing that as if, as if you can read. Okay, anyway. The ancient Indian scriptures are, are known collectively as the Vedas. The Bhagavad Gita comes from the Vedas. But what are the Vedas? The root vid means knowledge. According to the Hindus, the Vedas are holy scriptures. Any scripture that talks about the truth is the Veda. Another name for the Vedas is Shruti, which means that which is heard. Sages heard these truths in their deep meditation. They didn't read them somewhere or hear them from some other human being. They were not written by someone and they have no historical date. That's why the content, content of these shrutis is called the Santana Dharma or eternal truth. Even today in India, this philosophy is known simply as Santana Dharma and not as Hinduism. The word Hindu is incorrect. That label appeared only when foreigners came to India, saw a beautiful culture around the Hindu Valley, and started calling the people of that area Hindu. Later, it became Hindu. It was heard, or you could say it has been um, revealed or realized. Such truth does not pertain just to India because truth has no limitation. It is cosmic. All those who go into a properly receptive state can get the same vision or revelation. That's why you see the same truth if you go to the very core of any religion. It will be expressed in a little different way according to the age the people and the geographical area, but the truth behind it all is the same, whether it's thought by Moses, Jesus, Buddha, or Muhammad, Shankara, or Krishna, they all had the same truth revealed to them. So, right, they got into de uh, uh, meditation and uh, in meditative state, they heard the truth. 
the, those revelations were passed on to their students. For this reason, the scriptures were called Shrutis. The teacher said it and the student heard it. That's why the Shrutis are called Luta Marai. I, I'm not sure if I said that right, but unwritten scriptures in Tamil. After some time, as normally happens, the mental capabilities slowly eroded. Brain power grew duller and the energy weakened. The students weren't able to retain it all by heart. They heard and could remember for some time, but slowly they began to forget. It was then they started noting it down. That's how the Vedas came to be written. Until then, they were simply passed by word of mouth. That's why even today, if you read the original Vedas, you'll see they're like brief notes. Sometimes there are even incoherent parts. If you take notes while someone talks, only you can understand them. It was through their notes that the students passed the teachings on to their students by expanding directly from the notes and their students in turn took their own notes and so on and, and on. The Vedas cover the entire universe and all its activities. <laughs> it does not talk only about something spiritual. There's the theoretical wisdom part and also day-to-day -day side. The Vedas explain the different levels of life in the world. Brahmacharya, the student or celibate, um, Grihasta, the householder, Vanaprastha, the recluse, and how each should live. They say how a marriage should be conducted, how rituals are to be performed, everything in day-to-day -day life is given. The wisdom portion in the plain truth, the theoretical part, that's also called Vedanta. Anta means end. Vedanta means the end or goal of Vedas. This portion of the Vedas is also known as the Upanishads. The Upanishads say something directly about the final spiritual truth. But people found it difficult to grasp their meaning. So the great sages Vyasa, to whom the entire Vedas are ascribed, simplified it in his Brahma Sutras, teachings about the Absolute. Even the simplified sutras or threads were a little difficult for people, so again, they got diluted. It's something like giving medicine. If the patient finds it too difficult to swallow directly, coat it with sugar, put the high philosophy into a nice story, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God, is part of the story. The Gita is the same Vedic truth presented as a story. Let us always remember that each religion has its Veda. The Quran is also Veda. The Bible is Veda. The Torah is Veda. The Dhammapada is Veda. Each is a Veda because each revelation, each is a revelation of the same cosmic truth. If we want to learn something from a great scripture, we should approach it reverentially. Thus, we place ourselves in a receptive state. Let us begin with a traditional prayer to the scripture. Om, O Bhagavad Gita, by which Arjuna was illuminated by Lord Krishna himself and which was composed of 18 chapters within Mahabharata by the ancient sage Vyasa, O Divine Mother, destroyer, uh, destroyer of rebirth, who showers the nectar of oneness on us, O Bhagavad Gita, my affectionate mother, on thee I meditate. All the Upanishads are the cows, the milker is the cowherd boy, Krishna. Arjuna is the calf, people of purified intellect are the drinkers. The milk is the supreme nectar of the Gita. My salutations to the Lord, who is the source of supreme bliss, whose grace makes the mute eloquent and the crippled cross mountains. This means that with the grace of God, nothing is impossible. Okay, Om. We'll continue next time.